America is not a racist country. Aiming to become the first major U.S. city to stop the practice of police pulling over drivers for low-level offenses, which occur disproportionately often when the drivers are people of color. The so-called driving equality bill was passed by the city council by a vote of 14 to 2. It details which secondary offenses can no longer be the primary reason for pulling over a vehicle and will instead be resolved with mail-in citations. They include missing registration card, location of temporary registration, license plate placement, single broken bulb or light, other obstruction to a mirror, etc., minor bumper damage, lack of inspection, or emission sticker. The legislation comes in the wake of several national cases of high-profile deaths of black drivers following such routine traffic stops. Think Sandra Bland in Texas or Dante Wright in Minnesota, Walter Scott in South Carolina. In Philadelphia, the statistics are eye-opening. The population is 42% black, but according to police statistics analyzed by the Defender Association of Philadelphia, 72% of the drivers pulled over are black. Compared to whites, black drivers are 5.2 times as likely to be pulled over. Native American drivers 5.7 times, Latino drivers 1.6 times. While 94% of the drivers whose vehicles are searched were people of color, searches of white people stopped vehicles were actually more likely to turn up contraband. Police can still conduct stops for non-secondary violations. Think speeding, think blowing through a stop sign. But if the mayor, as expected, signs this into law, the police should have more free time to combat crime. According to the Defender Association, about 97% of police vehicle stops are for these low-level violations. So eliminating them could lead to an estimated annual reduction of 300,000 police encounters. Joining me now, the Philadelphia City Councilman who initiated the bill, Councilman Isaiah Thomas. Councilman, are those disproportionate figures a reflection of race or socioeconomic factors? So, Michael, first of all, good morning. Good morning to your audience. Thank you for having me. We appreciate you talking about this important bill. Um, I think that one could draw a correlation between socioeconomic status and some of the stops that we're seeing, but um, let's not uh, misunderstand when someone gets pulled over by law enforcement, you can't tell their social economic status. I myself have been pulled over in the city of Philadelphia more times than the amount of years I've been actually driving. I'm 37 years old. I've been driving over 20 years now. I've been pulled over well over 20 times. I've never lived in a socioeconomically disadvantaged neighborhood. My father is a retired teacher. We've lived in middle class communities our entire life. And I still myself have been uh, an active victim as it relates to driving while black in the city of Philadelphia. In your own experience, has it not mattered what type of a car you were driving? I think that the type of car does matter somewhat. A lot of us growing up in the city of Philadelphia, if you pulled, being pulled over by police as a rights of passage, we often have that talk with fathers, mentors, and other uh, adult figures in our life. And we are conscious of the cars that we drive because we understand purchasing certain cars puts you in a position where you're more inclined to be pulled over. Riding with a certain amount of people puts you in a position where you're more inclined to be pulled over. You referenced your father. I lost mine three years ago, but I remember well when I was starting to drive councilman, he said to me, beware of the guy with the broken taillight. This was as part of a lecture about defensive driving. He didn't mean because the guy might be black or Hispanic. His thought process was that vehicle is not well cared for, and maybe it shows a lack of concern about how to operate something that could cause damage. You'd have said what to my old man? Well, first of all, of course, sorry to hear about your father. Your father sounds very similar to my father because my father used to tell me all the time, I'm not worried about you. I'm worried about the person driving next to you. That is a significant concern. Uh, but what we do want to uh, put ourselves in a position to do is reimagine how we govern. Some of those same things that your father, as well as my father, are concerned about as it relates to the next driver, we still feel like we can have some uh, level of enforcement as it relates to motor vehicle code violations. We have a number of different methods that we want to use to be able to enforce minor traffic violations. And most importantly, we want to put law enforcement in a position where they can spend uh, more time focusing on more serious crimes. Here in the city of Philadelphia, we ask law enforcement to do a lot. And we feel like this bill is a step in the right direction, not just to improve relationships between communities of color and law enforcement, but also to put us in a position where law enforcement can focus more time with more serious crime. Maybe the most stunning statistic that I shared when introducing you is that 97% 
of the traffic stops are of the sort that no longer can be a primary basis. First of all, are law enforcement okay with this? And, and what are they saying about how they'll then use their time? So we um, are very proud of the fact that this was a collaborative effort. Yes, this was my bill, but uh, this bill came into fruition because of a working group that involved the police department in the city of Philadelphia, the mayor's office, as well as the public defenders and a number of other different stakeholders. So yes, this is something that law enforcement is on board with in the city of Philadelphia. And it's also a data component with this legislation as well too. So we can collectively monitor the data and put ourselves in a position where as though if we're not getting it right, we can offer some level of amendment to the legislation so we can ensure that we are getting it right. So we are very proud of the fact that this was a collaborative effort and we're excited to continue to work with law enforcement in the city of Philadelphia. Final comment. I talked about this on my radio program with you as my guest and some callers who were in law enforcement said you're taking away our ability to exercise street smarts. I know that street smarts to some are racism to others, but this whole idea that you know, instinct and intuition are a valuable part of law enforcement. Respond to that thought process. Well, what I would say is that some of those same instincts that folks um, are relying on have put us in a position to create more distrust between communities of color and law enforcement. We are seeing uh, record levels of crime, not just in Philadelphia, but in big cities all across the country. And we have to look at all of ourselves and say something that we're doing isn't right. I'm 100% sure that police do not commit the crimes that we're talking about in large parts in the city of Philadelphia that's spiking some of the public safety concerns that we see. But at the same time, we have to recognize that something that we're doing is not right. So uh, I am excited about this idea of reimagining what it looks like to police in the city of Philadelphia, reimagining what it looks like to govern in the city of Philadelphia. And I'm more than prepared to work with any level of law enforcement to put us in a position where we can effectively get this legislation right. Well, and I know that part and parcel of your legislation is all of the data will be saved and analyzed. So this is like a, you know, a big lab experiment about to unfold in the city of Brotherly. As you heard in the video, Philadelphia is the first state to do away with low level traffic stops. So they can no longer pull you over because you got an air freshener hanging in your rear view mirror or the light over your license plate don't work. You know, it, you know the normal petty things that they pull you over for and, and a black man or woman will end up dead over something petty. Well, they can't do that in Philly anymore. So we'll see how many other states will adopt this. They may just do it, ladies and gentlemen, not because they're trying to take it easy on us, but many of these states on their police force are having a worker shortage. And if you remember, I did one on Austin, like certain phone calls, they won't even accept on 911. You got to call a whole different number and the police will decide whether it's important enough to show up or not. You're going to see more of that as we move into 2022. If you don't have the manpower, you're not going to be going on all of these calls. And let's face it, Philly is suffering from a police shortage, just like the rest of the country. And that's one thing he didn't talk about, but they definitely have this going on. So this legislation that, you know, uh, Isaiah Thomas was talking about, will go into effect this week in the city of Philadelphia. They'll be become, they will be the first major U.S. city to ban police from stopping drivers for low-level traffic violations. Because when they did a study in the city, and they, they're finding the same thing they find all over the country, it was overwhelmingly Black drivers that were being pulled over at the most highest rate. Again, that just proves over-policing. That's what it proves. So the bill is called Driving Equality Bill, and it passed in the legislation 14 to 2 by the city council, and the bill passed on October 14th. 
So it now categorized certain motor vehicle code violations as primary violations, which allow people to pull folks over in the name of public safety and secondary violations that don't meet the criteria of law, uh, traffic, lawful traffic stop. All right, so the man that you saw speaking as council member Isaiah Thomas, and he is the one that wrote the bill. All right, so as you heard in the video, he had his own traffic stops that he experienced, you know, um, as a black man in the city of Philadelphia. So, I mean, it is a good thing because look, Philando Castile was a minor traffic stop and you saw what happened to him as well as Sandra Bland, Walter Scott, all minor traffic stops. Nobody should have ended up dead or in jail at all. All right. So you heard with, oh, well, they're going to take this away. Don't worry. These officers are so evil and crafty. If they can't get you on these little minor traffic stops anymore, they're going to come up with something else. Trust me, they're going to pull something else out of their bag of tricks and come after black people once again, because this is what they do. So they can't get you on the traffic stop. They'll get you on something else. So y'all, please tell me what you think about this bill that will go into effect in Philadelphia. No more minor traffic stops. Cops can't use that as an excuse to stop um, the majority of the black men and women behind the wheel. As you saw, 72% of the time, black men and women are pulled over in the city of Philadelphia. Well, that will be no more for minor traffic violations. Please leave your comment and subscribe. Don't forget to hit on the notification bell, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace, family.